the current glass so it's a capistrano again so uh, this is another lecture for statistics sorry for the mood anyway uh, moving on to the next part of our lesson this is actually uh, will be uh, I guess a two-part or three-part video wherein I will be uh, Separating each concepts based on their, uh, I think, their groupings regarding uh, introduction to statistics. But in any case, uh, we will be dividing this second lecture into uh, something techniques. We will be including some methods of collecting data. Uh, then, and also, we will be including the methods of presenting data. Then we will have another video for uh, summation notation sigma, right? So in that, let's first uh, dive into sampling techniques. So uh, sampling techniques, this is just a method on how uh, we select our samples. And by samples, as we have, uh, as we have discussed last, uh this video uh sample is just a portion of or part of the population of interest selected for analysis so group of individuals or objects or events in a research study in which information is obtained and some of you may be thinking what is population population consists all of the members of the group and the group to which uh results on the study are intended to apply so basically, uh, sampling technique is just uh, a way that uh, the way that we select the uh, these individuals or the samples that we will be using in our uh, study or research. So in this way, we will be able to minimize the resources that we need to conduct the research. And also uh, avoid uh, analyzing and uh, organizing a lot uh, or a large quantity of data. So in here, uh, in some techniques, you may look into it as, uh, for example, we have the current voters or current registered voters of Sambales. You, If you think of it, that's a large number. And if you want to conduct a research regarding their uh, preference, so if they want, they uh, would uh, on how they were would select their ano, their president, uh, surveying all of the members of the population would be tedious, and it it will not be cost effective. So in that, we utilize this technique or something technique in which. We just select a member of the population or what we call the sample so or the samples so uh, how do we determine the number of samples that we, we we will be selecting in the population so basically we use this formula this formula is what we call uh, Slovin's formula wherein uh, we have here uh, n is equal to capital N over 1 plus n error raised to 2. So where n or small n is the sample size, capital N is the population size, and E is the margin of error. So this margin of error is usually uh, expressed in percent. It, uh, when we are deciding regarding uh, deciding on which margin of error or how much margin of error we are using in a study, we, uh, we actually align this to the sigma or the significance level of our of our study that we will be using so uh, that is we were we will talk more about that in our uh, in the later part of the course which is on hypothesis testing or on the discussion of hypothesis testing so in that uh, here are just some examples uh, regarding Slovin's formula. So we have here uh, different population sizes and different margin of errors. So we just need to find n. So again, 
our N will be equal to our capital N over 1 plus N E squared. So, we will be using this formula to compute for the, the N of this following example. So, for number 1, we will have here N will be equal to 1,200 all over 1 plus uh, 1,200 times 0 0.1, 0, 0 point, uh, that is 10% uh, raised to 2, okay? Then, what will happen here? So, for the computations, you can use actually your scientific calculators if you have one for this computation. So, uh, wait a second. In that, uh, let me just walk through on how we can actually uh, compute this using a, the usual calculator. So for this calculator, and this is actually in scientific mode, we can what we can do here is use parentheses to be able to uh, to apply or to use this type of calculator. So what we will do here is just key in one thousand two hundred. Then we divide it, that will be our fraction bar, and we use parentheses uh, to, to compute this. So we have here 1 plus 1,200 times, we will have here times 0. 0.1 square. Another parenthesis here to end the equation, so we will have here 92. So, the rule in uh, computation of uh, number uh, of sample sizes, we usually round them up. So, as you may see here, we have here 92.3. So, if we have 92.3, we just round them up. So, that will be 93. So, what is the basis behind the rounded up, rounding up? Kasi wala naman tayong point 0.3 na tao. So, bakit round up? Kasi uh, we will be assuming the higher number. Okay. So, the next one, same concept. So, we'll have here, n will be equal to 135 all over uh, 1 plus 135 times 0 0.05, so that is 5% square. Okay, same scenario. We will have here 135, uh, 135, then divided by uh, 1 plus 135 times uh, 0.05 square. We will have here 100.9, so rounding it up, so we will have here 101. So, same goes for the other uh, formula, so we have here n is equal to 30, in which we will be dividing the 30 to 1 plus 30, uh, e which is 1%, so we have here 0 0.01. So, plugging that in to our calculator, so we have 30 divided by parenthesis 1 plus 30 times uh, 0 0.01 square. So, we will have here 29.9, which is actually 30. So, uh, I will be leaving the next two examples for you to uh, compute. But basically, uh, as you can see here, it, you will see a trend wherein if we decrease our uh, margin of error, the, the sample size will actually increase. So if we have here the 200 and it has a 20% uh, margin of error, the sample size here will actually fall 
in between 80 to 100. Then uh, for this uh, 1.3 million population size, and we and if we use 20% uh, as our margin, the number of samples will actually fall into a lower number that is not greater than 200. Okay. So in that, uh, the margin or the, the sample size is actually dependent also on which margin of error you will be using. And uh, in that, you can actually uh, you can actually align that margin of error with the type of analysis you will be using later in your research. So in that, that is our uh, Slobin's formula. So Slobin's formula will be useful in uh, in our selection of samples. Why? Because, of course, we need uh, Slobin's formula to compute for our, the number of samples that we needed in our study. So in terms of selecting, we just get the number. But uh, in here, we haven't discussed how would we select the individuals themselves. So, uh, dito papasok yung tinatawag natin sampling. Where in sampling refers to the uh, process of selecting the sample of individuals who will participate as part of the study. So, in the first part, we just determine the sample size. So, uh, for the first example, say we have there uh, 91 uh, individuals uh, out of the 1,200. So in here in sampling, we will be uh, discussing how would we select those 91 out of uh, 1,200. Because as of now, we just have their number. O ilan lang sila. But not necessarily on how uh, we don't, we haven't discussed how we would select them. So it is one of the most important steps in the research process. So basically, uh, it is divided into two parts, wherein by two parts, there are actually two words that we need to discuss. We have here choosing versus selecting. Choosing, by choosing, you just choose. So you napili ko, so napili ko. There is a bias regarding that, uh, that unlike selecting, where in selecting, you will be incorporating uh, some uh, parameters or some variables, where in, in the, those variables or those conditions, you will be selecting or getting the samples that uh, would suffice or would be useful for your uh, research. Okay, in that, we will be dividing the sampling techniques into two uh, main categories. We have the random sampling techniques and we have the non-random sampling techniques. So by random sampling techniques, uh, selecting of samples will fall under here and also for non-random. Okay? But uh, just choosing, it will be, will introduce some biases in your uh research. So for random sampling, we have the simple random sampling. We have the sim systematic random sampling, stratified random sampling, and the cluster sampling. So for the non-random sampling, we have the con convenient sampling, purposive sampling, auto sampling, snowball uh, sampling, and the judgment sampling. Okay? So first, let's discuss uh, the random Something. So by random, sampling techniques, it is a process whose member had equal chances of being selected in the population. So uh, say uh, that 1,200 are PRIMSU students. So all of those 1,200 students we have uh, listed earlier or counted earlier, they have equal chances to be selected as one of the 91 students. So... Uh, by uh, incorporating random technique, by random technique, uh, it is simply uh, by chance or probability sampling, using chances or equal chances, we will be selecting the students or the members of the samples. So in that, uh, we have here the simple random sampling. So it is a process of 
selecting n sample size in a given population by a random number or through lottery, such as fishbowl method and sweepstake method. So, uh, it's just follow these three steps. First, you need to determine the number of samples uh, depending on the population size and margin of error. That's uh, Slobin's formula. And secondly, you need to list down all the names and uh, number of each member of the population. And uh, lastly, randomly select samples using scientific calculator or draw plots. By uh, scientific calculator, there is actually a random number generator on the calculate in the uh, on calculators, on scientific calculators, or uh, you can simply uh, write the names of all uh, your uh, all the members of the population in one in uh, different paper, then fold it, put it in the fishbowl, then select your samples. So that is how uh, you do random sampling. Parang bingo lang. Baga yung about, but oh, ay uh, member ng population, tas may equal chances na makuha yung bawat uh, member ng population na yan. So paano magiging equal yung chances? Pagkabuhal ng pangalan, pagkalista, ibalik yung papel. So, equal pa rin yung chances. Hindi magbabago yung probability. So, that is how uh, we go about the simple random thing. Simple random sampling. It's just simple. Okay? Hopefully, nakasabay pa. And for the next uh, random sampling technique, we have the systematic sampling. It is a process of selecting the k element of the population using the desired number of subjects or respondent is a thing. So, this is just easy. Uh, another easy way of selecting samples. So, you just, you first determine the number of samples depending on the population size and margin error. Again, uh, Slobin's formula. Then, determine the K or considered, uh, the considered K by uh, dividing the population size by the sample size. So, if if we are to use the our sample earlier, so if we have uh, 1,200 and we divide it by 91, we will have 13.18 or 13.186. So, what we can do here is we round up, then we will have 14 so, if we have a list of those uh, 1,200 uh, members of the population, we just select every 13th element or 13th uh, individual in the list. So, that's for the third step. Have the complete list of the members of the population depending on their arrangement. You may decide on whichever arrangement you want. It may be alphabetical. It may be random. Okay. Then begin counting and listing the members of the respondent. So, for example, I have here uh, an n which is equal to 30. Our population size is 30. Then uh, we have here a uh, margin of error which is 20%. So, if we compute that using uh, Slobin's formula, we will have here uh, 14 respondents. For uh, the 30. So in here, we divided the 30 by 14. I'm not sure why I did But anyway, we rounded that off. So we will be selecting every second element or second uh, individual. Say this is the arrangement. So we lang natin. We just need to select every two. So we have here 34. So left to right, down, up, down tayo. Then we have 14. Then we have 23. Then we have 39, 30, 23, 15, and so on. So in here, actually, class, makikita nyo na we have here a sample size, which is 14. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that will be uh, 
our way of doing uh, systematic sampling. But going back to this example, say uh, instead of two, we round this up to three. So we have here three. So what we can do here is, is we will be selecting every third, uh, third individual in this sampling. So we're gonna be here one, two, three. Then we have one, two, three. One, two, three. Then one, two, three. Then one, two, three. Then three. Three and three. Three. So as you can see here, we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We only have ten. And we needed fourteen. So how do we go about this? So you ended here. You can again one, two, three, and one, two, three. You just need two more. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. So that will be our samples. So just in case that ayon, umabot kayo sa dulo na hindi pa puno yung samples na. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14. So we have there 14. So that is the earlier uh, earlier way of selecting samples. Okay? So why round up? Uh, you say, or matanong nyo, bakit? Sir, but may round up mo? Imbis na round down na lang. Kasi kung iisipin nyo, class, tulad ng nangyayari dun kanina, hindi umabot yung counting natin sa 12. So, parang uh, itong 15 at 12 ay natanggal dun sa ano, sa equal chance of being selected. So, yun yung reason kung bakit pinapasobra para maging uh, equal yung chances dun sa lahat ng members ng uh, population. But anyway, so, our next uh, random sampling is stratified random sampling. So for stratified random sampling, it is a process of subdividing the population into subgroups or strata uh, by drawing members at uh, random for each subgroup or strat stratum, or just a, a singular form of strata. So in that, uh, here are the steps. Uh, reading through it, medyo parang ang hirap intindihan sa totoo lang. But anyway, uh, hindi naman talaga ganun. So first, same step with the other random sampling. We first need to uh, determine the number of samples depending on the population size and the margin error. And also, we determine the percentage of each group according to population size. So we will be seeing that later. So, uh, multiply each uh, percent to the computed sample size. Check if the total sample size tallies uh, with uh, the computer computed sample size. And then, the last step, same with simple random sampling and uh, systematic sampling. Randomly select computed samples of uh, computed size per strata or group. Meaning to say, at this point, uh, we just computed after this part pala sa number 4 uh, we just computed how many members of each strata or group uh, will be selected but for number 5 ito na papa dito na papasok yung random selection or uh, randomly selecting individuals uh, per uh, strata so by strata pwede ganito siya ano so, say we have here uh, a given population of a certain university is listed below and the margin of error is 1%. So, we have here nursing which has 60, uh, 60, 6,000 students. Accountancy have uh, 500. Uh, management have 2,000. Agri, 1,000. Education uh, is 2,500 which is has a total of 12,000. So using Slobin's formula, uh, we will be computing 
the total uh, population or the total number of samples that we need for the, this study. So in that, we will just use this formula. So we have here and this is our n, 12,000. So we have here 12,000 divided by 1 plus 12,000 times. Where do we get this? This is actually our 1%, which is actually equal to 0 0.1. So uh, we have there 0 0.1 square. In that, we actually have uh, 5,454.5454 and so on. So in that, we just uh, round this up to 5,455. Okay. So in that, uh, 5,455, we will be uh, distributing this 5,455 for each strata. So, mga strata natin dito, yung nursing, accountancy, management, agriculture, and duration. So, for each strata, depending on the population of each strata, we will be subdividing this uh, 5,455. At some cases, yung iba, ang ginagawa, they just divide this equally among the strata. Pero minsan kasi nagkakaroon ng problema dun. Like for this example, uh, we are to divide 5,455 into 5. As you can see, uh, nasa 1,100 ba? Or 1,100 below. And 500 lang accountancy natin. So, basically, uh, when we are using uh, stratified random sampling, mas maganda kung naka-base dun sa percentage ng population ng each strata yung uh, kukunin nating sample size for each strata. So, for example, ganito yung mangyayari dun. We just need to compute for the percentage. So, paano ginawa yun? So, total. Okay. Consider nyo yung total. So, we have here 6,000 population for nursing divided by uh, 12. So, that will be 0.5. Okay? Hindi dapat percentage ito. Relative percentage dapat yan. Anyway, uh, relative frequency pala. But anyway, uh, we have here 50% yan. Kung so, convert natin. So, that will be 50. This will be 41.6. This will be by percent yan ha. And this will be 16.67%. This will be 8.33%. And we have here 20.33%. So, yan yung distribution ng no, ano natin. No, bawat, ano, bawat strata. Then, using that percentage, or kahit hindi nyo na-convert, okay, uh, we just need to multiply that to 5,455. And as you may have remembered, 5,455 is our sample size based on our computation earlier. Okay? So in that, uh, we will get uh, specifics by specifics. But we will get uh, sample sizes for each strata that is proportional for to its uh, population. So, makikita nyo rito, uh, we have here uh, 4% ng population ay taga-accountancy. So, 4% lang. Or 4% ng, ba't nga ba 41 yun? This would be 4.16%. Sorry. 4.16%. Uh, so, 4.16% lang yung kukunin natin dun sa 5,400. So, after that, Doon na natin, doon ka na magkakaroon tinatawag natin random sampling. So, it means that uh, using any of the two, so yung again, so simple random sampling or systematic random sampling, you just need now to select 2,728 from nursing, 6,000 from the 6,000 of nurse, uh, population of nursing. And also, we need to select... Uh, 227 out of 500, 909 out of 2,455 out of 1,000, and also 1,136 out of 2,500. So, that will be your uh, stratified samples. Okay? So, for the last one, we have here uh, cluster sampling. So, 
yung medyo somehow ay minsan questionable <laughs> kasi madalas nang ginagamit lalo na ng SWS surveys. Uh, it is a process of selecting clusters from a population which is very large or widely sp spread out over a wide geographical area. So, meaning to say, uh, by wide geographical area, pwede kasing isang buong probinsya yung pupunin mo. For example, uh, for some valleys, I guess we have 13, 13 municipalities. So, if you are to get uh, samples from each of the municipality, it will be costly. Isipin natin, ano, yung isipin nyo, yung pagbiyahe, paghahanap ng kung sino yung mga samples na napili nyo or na-select nyo. So, uh, yun yung nagiging problema. So, in cluster sampling, what we need to do here is just, we need to divide the population into groups. So, since wide geographical area yung pinag-uusapan natin, it can be a district, or it can be by province, by city or municipality, or locality. So in that, uh, again, you need to compute for the number of samples. By number of samples, we will be considering here uh, the number of municipalities. Then, we will randomly select the number of groups. So by groups, kung sa 13 na, ano, na municipio sa so, some values, we will be selecting some of those groups. So, then, within those groups, you will be randomly selecting samples from each group. O halimbawa, 13 yung munisipyo sa some values. And we randomly selected Botolan and San Marcelino. Dagdagan natin. Uh, Botolan, San Marcelino, and Palawin. Okay? Dun sa tatlong yun, Within those three groups, doon ka kukuha ng samples doon sa tatlong groups. So that will be more cost uh, effective than visiting all of the 13 municipalities of San Luis. So that is how we do this cluster sampling. Uh, as much as possible, you can avoid using this because uh, wide geographic areas may... Uh, may have some biases regarding uh, the sample, so uh, the respon responses, so it's up to you. But anyway, that will be all for our random sampling or uh, our uh, random sampling techniques. Okay, so for the non random sampling techniques, uh, some of this actually don't have. Computation. So, ito yung example pala ng cluster sampling. Okay. So, you can pause the video and read through this. So, now that's uh, over. Then, let's proceed to non-random sampling. So, non-random sampling techniques are a sampling procedure where samples select Samples are selected in deliberate manner with uh, little or no intention of randomization. It is also called non-probability sampling. So, hindi naman porket sinasabi natin dito na hindi na tayo magkakaroon ng randomization ay punong-puno na ng uh, bias yung naging experiment natin kasi or yung study natin dahil uh, wala tayong intention for randomization. Non-random sampling techniques actually are useful when we are talking about uh, small uh, isolated groups or marginalized groups. Uh, when we talk, uh, uh, parang sa, ano, sa fish list, for example. One of the social uh, groups that you will be taking into consideration are the fisher folks. Okay? So fisher folks, members of pharmacy, if you know about pharmacy, uh, and also the LG. So if you're doing uh, doing uh, a study regarding those group of people, sa sobrang konti nila, halimbawa nag-focus ka sa uh, fisher folks ng kanila, sa, sa sobrang liit ng group na yun, in comparison to the larger, uh, yung larger group of people na residents ng Candelaria, may hihirapan mong kumuha ng samples. Kung, lalo na kung Ira-randomize mo pa. So, kumbaga, 
uh, you have a small group, then you will be just getting a, a small sample of that. Then, magkakaroon ng problema yung study mo. So, uh, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga tinatawag na nating non-random sampling techniques wherein uh, through these techniques, mas magiging ano, magkakaroon ng laman yung study natin. So, lalo-lalo na kapag maliit yung mga samples natin. So, one example of this uh, random sampling technique is the convenient sampling. Okay? It is a process of selecting a group of individuals who conveniently are available for the study. So, limbawa, a researcher may only include close friends and clients to uh, be included in sample population. Kasi andyan na sila. And a researcher chosen respondent that were located at close vicinity of his residence. Kasi nandiyan na sila. And by convenient sampling, actually, uh, convenient sampling may fall into a uh, halos lahat ng non-random sampling kasi andyan yung convenience na nandyan na sila. So, that's why uh, sila yung pipiliin for the study. Pero minsan, ina-avoid na gamitin to sa study. Kasi, ayan, uh, nandyan yung bias na sinasabi nila. Kasi, on convenience mo, on close locality lang yung tinitingan. But in any case, this may be a uh, choice for uh, convenient, for sampling. Okay? So, another one is what we call purposive sampling. This is actually better by my opinion, or better than convenient sampling. So, for purposive sampling, it is actually a process of selecting based on judgment to select a sample which uh, the researcher believe based on prior information will provide the data they need. So, this method of sampling uh, deliberately targets specific group of individuals that the researcher assumes to have the data he or she needed. So, for example nga, isang example dito ay yung sa selecting all uh, BS education graduates for a study regarding revision of BS education curriculum. That's one example. Another example may be, uh, your purpose is to get the, per the perspective of future folks regarding the decline of fish tax. May fish tax, dami ng uh, isda sa dagat. So, hindi mo naman pwedeng tanongin yung farmers dyan, di ba? Yung teachers dyan regarding dyan sa, sa perspective na yan. Kasi, so, on the purpose of the study that you need to talk to fisher folks, you will be selecting fisher folks. So, that is our uh, purposive sampling. Okay? So, again, this is uh, based on your uh, judgment. Okay? So for the next one, uh, we have here cut assembling, uh, assembling that is applied when an investigator uh, survey collects information from a, an assigned number or quota from one or several sample units fulfilling certain prescribed criteria. Uh, this cut assembling is the, I think, is the cheapest to administer. Because once na reach mo na yung quota mo or yung specified number. Pag na-fulfill mo na yung, ano, yung specified number na yun, then tapos ka na. Ang disadvantage lang nito, it may be, uh, may not be reliable. Kasi uh, pwedeng yung, halimbawa, kung nakota sampling mo, halimbawa, tinitingnan mo halimbawa ay perception ng mga tao or ng voters regarding sa way ng pangahampanya ng mga politiko. Then, ang ginawa mo ay nagkota something ka. So, alam mo, pumasok ka sa isang kalye, maraming bahay, kinausap mo silang lahat, tapos, na-reach mo na yung kota, tapos na yung study. Yun nga lang, you're at least na pwedeng yung isang barangay na yun, or isang lugar na yun na pinuntahan mo, ay pare-parehas ng, uh, tawag dito, ng idolohiya tungkol sa tingin nila sa pumulitika. So, may ano, may inclination yung magiging data na magagawa mo. So, yun lang yung hindi masyado maganda dito sa photo sampling. Again, uh, next natin is snowball sampling. It is a technique in which one or more members of the population are, are located 
and used to lead the researcher to another member of the population. So, one example here that I, I included last time. Uh, a researcher conducting a study about the effects of gambling, uh, especially sabong, the well-being well -being of sabongero conducted the survey in a cockpit arena. Ang okay. gagawin dyan, kumausap ka ng isang sabongero, tapos tatanungin mo sa sino po kaya yung pwede ko rin pong makausap, katulad sa pag-uusap ko sa inyo, para sa karagdagang information po tungkol dito sa study ko. So, ituturo ka niya, then, ganun din yung gagawin nyo sa next na yun, ituturo ka rin niya sa iba. So, snowball, pakalat yung kal kakalap na yung, ano, yung way mo para dun sa ano, pagkuhan ng data sa, sa mga sabong yan. Sa pang example niyan ay pwede rin sa mga, uh, ginagamit kasi to usually sa, ano, sa maliliit na ano na grupo halimbawa uh, isa lang yung kilala mong member ng Bantay Ambay ang Bantay Ambay ay yung mga si wardens natin na tinatawag so halimbawa kinausap mo yung isa pwede mo siyang tanongin kung sino yung iba pang Bantay Dagat okay tapos ituturo ka na nila dun sa iba pang Bantay Dagat so that is just another example of snowball sample Okay, so next natin ay voluntary sampling. So it is a technique used when a uh, sample are uh, composed of respondents who self-select or volunteer to the study or survey. So uh, samples may have a strong interest in the topic of the study. So example nito ay pwedeng yung application rating ng Google Play or yung mga online surveys. So, nasa sa inyo, kung sasagutan nyo siya, nasa sa inyo kung magbibigay kayo ng rating. So, okay. that's why it is called voluntary sample. Okay? Hopefully, malino yan. Okay? And, uh, next natin ay judgment something. So, in judgment something, it is a technique when the researcher uh, relies on his or her uh, personal or sound judgment in choosing samples to participate in the study. Samples may also be selected based on the opinion of an expert. So, it is uh, examples to surveys and studies on how to be... But anyway, uh, this, uh, this judgment sampling is based on perspectives, based on whether one individual will be useful for the study, depending on your perspective or the expert's perspective. So, alimbawa, uh, gusto mong tingnan yung or gusto mong gawa ng study yung regarding sa, ano, sa capture fisheries, may capture fisheries, yung uh, techniques or gusto mong makita yung te techniques na ginagamit sa panguhuli ng isda. So let's say, halimbawa, malaking isda like tuna or uh, blue marlin. So, sino yung pupuntahan mo? Siyempre, yung mga tao na matagal na nung yung isda. So, that is your judgment. So, that is how you we select samples using judgment sample. So, I think I will cut the video or the lesson here for now. Uh, we will be just uh, including the next part of the the lesson, which is actually uh, methods of collect collecting data on a, an, on a short video. So in that, today we actually discussed the following, wherein we uh, discussed sampling. Okay. We actually, we also studied uh, or discussed uh, Slobin's formula, where, which is a method of computing the sample size for our study. Also, we discussed uh, different sampling techniques where we categorized them into random sampling techniques and non-random sampling techniques. We have four random sampling techniques, which we call simple random sampling, we have systematic sampling, we have 
uh, stratified random sampling. Also, we have cluster sampling. And for the non-random uh, sampling, we have convenient sampling, we have purposive sampling, quota sampling, snowball sampling, voluntary sampling, and judgment sampling. So in that, I will be ending the video for now. And see you next time. Bye.